Got to adjust things up here. Well, it is about four o'clock. We'll start here in, in just a bit. I will um, let everyone know that uh, um, we, are, we are experiencing thunderstorms here in, in South Florida. So if you hear thunder or rumbling or anything like that, um, that is uh, uh, that is probably so um, just so uh, just so everyone is aware the rumbling isn't coming from where I'm at. It, it's actually coming from outside. So uh, looking forward to uh, taking your questions. And uh, as you can hear right there, that's uh, uh, the sound of thunder in South Florida. So uh, but we're going to go through we're going to we're going to get through it. We're going to uh, rock and roll. First time we did this was about a month ago. And it, it went very well. We had, uh, you know, a ton of participation. Um, you know, people ask their questions, which you can do so if you just uh, take part in the chat. Uh, I, I, it's what I see. So there's a little chat uh, function function over here, and I see your questions, and I try to answer them as as quickly as as I can as I can get to them. But um, first, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, legalization. Um, I know that's been something that has been. Uh, uh, on a lot of people's minds. And in terms of federal legalization, unfortunately, I, you know, there's really nothing new there. Um, you know, things have stalled out in the Senate. Um, you know, I think there's hope that maybe the Moore Act, which is kind of the, the banking act that would help cannabis companies uh, receive uh, access to more capital or easier capital rather, um, will 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 move to the House faster than a, a cannabis legalization bill will go through uh, the Senate. Um, basically the, the way it works, if, if, if you're not, if you're not familiar is that right now, cannabis companies, every time they need money from a bank, it's not that they can't get it. It's just that the loops and, and loopholes and, 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 and red tape they have to go through to get it, uh, makes it very difficult. Basically every time they want money, uh, they have to go back every time. So if you need a million dollars this year, that's fine. And then the next time you need another million dollars for capital expansion or anything like that, you've got to go back and reapply and do the whole process over again. A lot of companies have kind of what's called a revolving line of credit. And, and this is basically where a bank gives you, uh, it's like a credit card. Uh, they give you a line of credit that is worth so much and you can draw on that uh, as, as you see fit and then pay it back um, as you go. And, you know, but cannabis companies don't have the ability to do that um, because they are a federally illegal business. So the MORE Act is hopefully you know, its intent is, is to, you know, lessen that burden on cannabis companies to uh, to be able to get money. But while federal legalization is, is stalling, um, one, one good thing is, is there are several states uh, that are taking the initiative here. And I, I like to look at several websites, uh, one of them being Marijuana Moment. Um, you know, they do, uh, they do a really good job tracking legalization. Also talk to some people that are in the legalization field, uh, that know, uh, kind of the ins and outs of how it works. Um, I can tell you that, um, you know, it looks like Rhode Island, uh, is looking for, uh, you know, part of an agenda for an upcoming special session that, uh, could, uh, in, in introduce, uh, you know, equity, uh, equity principles for cannabis companies, which is good. Um, Wyoming, uh, is a state that, uh, is now in the process of, uh, gathering signatures for a ballot measure for 2022. Um, lawmakers are looking at putting uh, marijuana legalization on the 2022 ballot in that state. Uh, I just read somewhere that a recent poll in Minnesota, uh, shows that there is growing support for marijuana legalization. So we're seeing a lot of, uh, oh, and, and Nebraska, uh, another, another state that is a bit of a surprise actually, but Nebraska, uh, have uh, submitted actually two medical marijuana initiatives for the 2022 ballot. So it's kind of hedging the bet a little bit. Uh, if, if one doesn't work, then maybe they get another one. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it, it's interesting that, you know, we're seeing this broad based support for cannabis legalization across the country. Um, but hundred senators in, in the Senate and 435 members of the house haven't quite gotten on board yet. Um, not really sure why, uh, you know, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, the, the politics are always at play. It's not as straightforward as we all want it to be, or all think it should be. Um, you know, there's always horse trading. There's always, uh, you know, amendments added. There's, there's always something that comes up when it comes to legislation. It's never as straightforward. Um, so, you know, obviously you're going to have states that have passed cannabis, uh, or marijuana legalization. Their senators are probably going to be in favor of it. Um, unfortunately that only comes to 36. So, um, you know, you, you still have to, to breach a majority plus one, uh, 
uh, or a majority, which is 50 plus one in the Senate to, to, to make it through. Um, you know, again, you know, I've talked about it in, in, in podcasts, uh, in marijuana market updates before that, you know, taxation, um, isn't the issue. Uh, you know, people do not, um, don't mind paying a higher tax to partake in legal cannabis. That that's never really been an issue. We, I mean, Washington has a 37% tax on it. Uh, you know, so, and, and, and it still is robust in terms of sales. Um, Illinois, uh, Oregon, California, I mean, Colorado, they, they all have Massachusetts. They all have, um, you know, taxes levied that are higher than your typical five to 7% sales tax on, on cannabis, whether it's to cannabis, people who buy cannabis over the counter, those who produce it, uh, those who cultivate it, you know, there's always a tax levied somewhere and it's much higher than anywhere else. Um, so I, you know, tax isn't really the issue and a selling point would be the tax money can be used for, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, equality, uh, measures, social justice measures, uh, things like that. Uh, but for some reason that just hasn't taken hold and, and I don't really quite understand why Kristen asked a, a, a good question here. What's the difference between decriminalization and legalization? Um, legalization is where you can use it uh, you can buy it, you can sell it, uh, under, under whatever state guidelines are decriminalization, uh, basically means that it's not a serious felony if you are caught with it. Um, I, there's more to it than that. That that's, that, that's a very 30,000 foot view uh, of how that is. So decriminalization is basically just the legality of when you get caught. Um, legalization means that there is no restriction outside of what's imposed on the state on what you can and can't do. So it may be you're limited to so many plants as a, as a home producer or something like that. Uh, decriminalization applies to when you've been arrested and you are facing jail time. Uh, so it, it's, there, there is a difference and, and that's something that is important to understand as well. Um, when we start talking about legalization, there are decriminalization measures and there are legalization measures and they are distinctly different. Decriminalization does not legalize marijuana. Um, it just lessens the penalty for if you get caught with it, it may make it a misdemeanor. Uh, it may lessen the jail time. It may, you know, it, it may expunge sentences. Uh, if you have been arrested for non nonviolent, uh, you know, drug possession, things like that, but it does not legalize the substance. So it is an important distinction to understand. So good question, Kristen. I, I, uh, I appreciate that. I, again, if you have a question, uh, anything you'd like to, to ask involving cannabis or, uh, uh, even the broader market, you know, we opened this up and, uh, uh, I, I had to kind of beg and plead with my boss cause he's kind of an ogre. He's really not, he's actually a, a really cool guy. But, uh, I, I said, you know, I think we should just leave this. We should just have this open for everyone to be able to jump on and, and, and ask their questions. And, and he, and he was okay with that. So that that's great, but this is a good opportunity for, uh, for you to ask. And maybe there's a particular stock you'd like me to look at. I do have, uh, my screeners up and, and I do have uh, things I can look at fairly quickly. Uh, if you want to talk more about legalization, we certainly can. Um, just because, you know, there are, uh, again, a lot of states that are pushing forward with, with the call to legalize, uh, marijuana, whether it be medically or for adult use, or even for both. Um, the courts are starting to, uh, you know, uh, there's two federal, there's federal courts in two U S territories. Now they're actually hosting, uh, events on marijuana legalization, tourism impacts, um, which is, I thought I, I read that in marijuana moment. I thought that was really uh, really interesting uh, that, that you've got federal courts that are actually doing this now. So I, I think we're just, uh, uh, you know, um, we're, 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 it's going to happen. It's just a, a process of when. Uh, let's see. I saw something about a fab company in Washington. Was that you? Uh, no, that was that was not me. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm, I'm thinking you're asking, did I speak on that? And I, I did not. Uh, um, but I don't, uh, if you're asking if it is me, then no, it is not me either. Um, you can see back behind money markets. That is, uh, uh, you know, where, where I'm affiliated with, um, let's see how low can they go? And you I see your question and I'll get to it here in just a second. How low can they go? Uh, you know, uh, we're, if you're a cannabis investor, you, you already know that, uh, you know, volatility is there. It's, it's like crypto only maybe not as volatile as crypto. Um, you know, we're seeing a drawdown. I think I read somewhere since March, there's been about a 51% drawdown, uh, on cannabis stocks. Um, it, it hasn't happened nearly across the board and we've seen companies that have not been impacted nearly as much as others. Um, I, I think I mentioned one in, uh, uh, one of my exclusive videos that I did on our membership program. And that was, um, 
you know, when we, when I released my top five, uh, my cannabis watch list picks for, for the month. Uh, and one of them actually, it seems some very, very flat trading, even through the most volatile times here, even from back in, in, in February. So, you know, when someone asks, you know, how, how, how low can cannabis stocks go? Well, obviously the, 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 the limit is zero. I mean, it, 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 that, it, that's just how it, I mean, that's just how it works. Um, but you know, do I think there's going to be a turnaround? I, I do. I, I'm just not sure what that, what the catalyst is going to be for that turnaround. I, I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't know whether there's needs to be something that sparks the market. Um, because right now we've seen, uh, you know, I've just been tracking various cannabis, uh, ETFs or in indices, or even uh, my own watch list stocks, you know, there's really been nothing, uh, you know, in terms of headline grabbing that has suggested there is a, a significant headwind for cannabis stocks outside of the fact that any legalization talk has gone nowhere. And, and so I don't really know if, um, you know, that is, uh, you know, what that is. However, and I, and I see here, Steve, you actually bring up a, an interesting point, And that is, you said, he says, bye, bye, bye. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily prescribe to the idea of buying on a dip only because you never really know when the dip will end. Um, however, you know, this is providing some very attractive entry points for uh, a lot of cannabis companies. Um, you know, you look at grow generation, grow generation, uh, is, is on our cannabis watch list. And they just got they just got beat down after earnings, and they only missed uh, they only missed uh, EPS by a penny. They actually beat revenue, but they just got it was thirty one percent. They just got hammered. Um, but you know it does present an, a, a good possible entry point for you if if grow generation is uh, something you want to look at. Um, uh, you want as far as my favorite uh, stocks <laughs> in terms of cannabis, well. Uh, you know, I, it's, it, it's not so much that I have favorites. I I'm, I'm very much technical when it comes to these types of things. I look at the technicals first and then I look at the fundamentals, um, you know, to get a much bigger picture uh, of things. Uh, so in terms of favorites, you know, there's a lot of cannabis companies out there that are doing very good things. And we do have some of those in, uh, our, our cannabis watch list. Uh, you know, Nate mentioned planet 13, um, planet 13, I think is, uh, is a very good company with a very aggressive approach, uh, to what they're doing. They just opened a superstore in Santa Ana, California. They just bought recre, uh, they just bought harvest recreation, uh, health and recreations, uh, medical license here in Florida, which if you're not familiar with how it works in Florida, in order to have a dispensary, you have to have a treatment license. So you can't do one without the other. What, uh, uh, Planet 13 has done is they have bought the license from Harvest Health and Recreation that will now allow them to uh, to jump in and start running dispensaries in the medical market here in Florida. And if you have missed any of my previous um, you know discussions in terms of sales and and jobs created, Florida ha is uh, created I think the third highest number of jobs in the cannabis industry, and only medical is legal here in Florida. Uh, and uh, the only two states that created more jobs in the cannabis market. Um, is, uh, I believe California and Colorado. So, you know, there is a, a sizable market here. And I think it's only a matter of time, uh, before the Florida legislature realizes there is significant tax benefits here for the state to legalize adult use. Um, not sure when that's going to happen. Uh, if you follow Florida politics at all, you know, that there's other priorities that the state seems to be embroiled with that I won't get in the middle of. Um, let's see. Uh, Jack mentioned bioharvest. I do want to look that up just real quick um, and, and see if I can get an accurate idea here um, and see what I can find on bioharvest sciences. Um, I've got the Canadian exchange here, which is uh, not the over the counter, but uh, it, it basically moves the same. Bio Har bioharvest sciences is a Canadian company. Uh, they do uh, they work in uh, Israel and internationally. Uh, let's see. Stock wise. Um, I see that they had a nice run up, uh, in February and they have kind of seen a resistance point at around in Canadian dollars, uh, around 36 cents a share. Um, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, you're right, Jack. It is actually an Israeli company that's on the Canadian exchange. That is, that is correct. Thank you for, um, for, for that. But, I mean, their headquarters, they actually are in Vancouver. So the, 601 half dozen the other, but yes, you are right. They do primarily work in Israel, but they do have a headquarters in Canada and they are traded on the Canadian stock exchange. But, um, you know, volume is relatively low here. Um, finances are, you know, they're, they're good if they're, if they're holding to, 
um, what I see in terms of projections, I see, uh, let's see, income statement of total revenue, total revenue, uh, is a jump is, is has jumped already. They had about 396 million in fiscal 20, uh, through, uh, the second quarter, they're at 728 million. So, uh, that's good. Their gross profit is moving up. Net income is a bit of a struggle, which means, uh, you know, they've been hovering around that five to six thousand, uh, five to six million dollar range in terms of, uh, uh, of their, of their net income, which tells me that they haven't really, solved the issue of, of, of spending to research and cultivate, um, which is a challenge across the, the broader cannabis market entirely. That's, that's not anything new. This is why cannabis companies, uh, by and large, don't, don't make money. And that's because they spend a lot on growing. They spend a lot on producing. They spend a lot on shipping uh, and things like that. And what they make up for in sales doesn't cover that cost. Um, so, uh, you know, I, 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 I think there's some potential here with BioHarvest. I'd want to look at it a little bit more, you know, price-wise, um, uh, you know, movement-wise. I, I like to see stocks that have a little bit better uptrend, um, and I don't see that yet. That's not saying that I that it won't happen. Um, you know, to date, uh, I believe it's got a twelve-month uh, uh, return of about one hundred seventy-one percent, and that was thanks to a big run-up. Uh, and when it ran up, ran up in February, its pairback wasn't nearly uh, as low. So that, that has helped in its, in its overall, in its overall growth in terms of its stock price. Um, for me, it's one I'd watch, uh, not one I would get into necessarily because it is kind of bouncing. Um, so it could still have some, some, some floor left to reach. Um, I don't know. Uh, and again, I don't see much of an uptrend, uh, that I'd like to see a little bit more of not so much the same as like what we see with green zone fortunes. And with what you see on money and markets, just because it's the cannabis company, uh, and 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 you know the uptrends aren't nearly as profound, uh, so I don't look for a massive run up uh, when I when I look at these stocks and their stock charts. I, I don't. I, that's not really what I look at. I look for at least some kind of an uptrend, and I don't see it yet. And Jack, I would love to talk with you more about it uh, and and uh, and and get more information about it. Cause I think there is a lot of potential. I think, I think that it's, it's a cannabis company that I think is, uh, potentially very strong. Uh, it's, it's not met with as, as much, uh, resistance on the downswing as other cannabis companies. So that's encouraging. Um, uh, and yes, Steve, we talked about that. Maryland, uh, has talked about the 2022 ballot. Uh, they are moving forward with that. And, um, you know, I think there is, uh, 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 there is a good, uh, a good amount of support, uh, for, uh, that measure in Maryland. Uh, Jack, you mentioned high tide and, you know, I, 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 I was kind of, I, I had an email, uh, through our, our general email, which is feedback at moneymarkets.com. And, and someone had suggested that I was hiding from talking about high tide because it was down so much. And that wasn't really, that wasn't the case at all is because high tide is part of our cannabis watch list. And that content is on our membership program. So it's not that I'm running from it, from it or anything like that. It, it's just, a, it's, it's just in a different location, uh, on YouTube. And I, in fact, I've probably talked about high tide ad nauseum to some of our members. Um, you know, it is down, but it was down as much as 25% at one point in time. Now it's, it's down only 10%, uh, according to what I'm looking at right now. Uh, and, and it is, it, it is showing a nice upward move. And, and I, and so I think if you're holding high tide, you know, I'm not going to give you, you know, personal, uh, portfolio advice, but if you're holding high tide, I think you'd hang on to it. Uh, you know, I don't think that I, I, when you look at, uh, what I talked about in the marijuana market update this week was about Apple and the app store now opening things up to allow cannabis companies to sell, um, on, on the app store, which I think is huge. And if you remember high tide, uh, has bought up a significant amount of, um, on e-commerce cannabis, e-commerce, uh, you know, dank stop uh, and a few others. And they have now access to a massive list. Uh, of emails that they can now market to. And if you throw in an app on top of that, um, you know, I think the sky is the limit here for high tide. Um, someone had mentioned planet 13. Um, and yeah, Jack, I'm with you. I love the e-commerce. I think, I think that's, that's, that's an underserved part of the cannabis market that I think now that Apple has lifted this restriction and it happened in June. Um, but you know, it, technology takes time. Uh, I think it's going to be something we're going to see a lot more of. I, I think we're gonna see a lot more cannabis companies dip their toe in, to the market. And once Google does it and they will, 
uh, you know, uh, and then it's just going to explode. Then you've got the entire smartphone market that is opened up uh, to buying, uh, buying and selling cannabis uh, via via mobile. So I think you know if you're smart, you're you're looking for companies that are, um, you know, cannabis companies that are starting to push into that that are publicly traded. There aren't very many. Um, in fact, there's only about three or four apps out there that I could actually find uh, that have now jumped on Apple's. Uh, move to uh, allow for the sales uh, via via mobile, but mobile <clears throat> is taking a huge uh, a huge chunk out of retail sales. I mean, it was four percent of retail sales ten, in you know ten years ago. It's thirteen to fourteen percent today. That's a, I mean that's a that's a huge jump. That's that's a ten percent. That's a that's massive. So uh, you know I, I think cannabis companies are looking for ways to innovate and and market and do things smarter. Uh, and I think e commerce is, is definitely a way. Um, to to go about it. Um, uh, YJK asked about cannabis beverages. Um, you know, there's been a lot of you know there's a lot of excitement with Molson Coors and their partnership uh, to develop uh, more cannabis beverages. There is uh, Saltwater Brewery has a 420 brand. I think the thing is is they don't sell. Um, there there's just, they they just don't sell to the volume of which they need to in order for it to be a profitable industry. Um, I don't, I, I, it, it's not that I think that it won't happen. It's just right now it, it, it costs more to produce than what companies are making by selling cannabis beverages that, and you know, I, I, you know, a, a lot of it. And Kristen, that was exactly where I was going. Uh, and the other thing is, at least to me, they're awful. They taste terrible. They're, they're, I, I don't, if you're looking for taste when you're drinking, then and the cannabis beverage is likely not for you. Uh, but, but they, they don't taste very good at all. I mean, I, I've tried, I, and, and again, what, what I, what I'm trying is I'm not trying ones that are laced with cannabis. I'm trying ones that are just branded towards cannabis and they just simply taste terrible. You're mixing alcohol with, uh, uh with a, with a dank cannabis and it's just, it's, it's not good. It's not, it's not pleasurable to drink at all. I tried one and I got about one sip of the way into it and I'm like, yeah, I can't do this. That That's not, I, I can't do it. It's just not happening for me. So I, I, I just, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a nice vertical, um, but I just don't know if it's uh, one that's going to be profitable for, for cannabis companies uh, anytime soon. Uh, Steve asks, is it a good time to get into jazz? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, um, stock chart wise, um, it might be actually, Th this might be a good time. And I, I wish I could screen share here, but I can't, but I, uh, to show you what I'm looking at, Jazz Pharmaceuticals, um, is in Ireland <clears throat> and, um, they are traded, uh, on the NASDAQ. It's J A Z Z. Um, and this company was going gangbusters. In fact, if you want to talk about a company, uh, it's a pharmaceutical company, but it does have uh, a segment in cannabis. They do focus, um, a lot on uh, neuroscience, uh, sleep deprivation, medicines, movement disorders, uh, they are they are into oncology and things like that. So it's much broader than it's like Perkin Elmer. Um, Perkin Elmer is a genomics company that does testing, um, but they do have a, a sector that does involve cannabis. Jazz is no different. Um, and and but this stock here, in a very short amount of time, it had a I mean it it moved massively. It, it up up till about July twelfth, this thing had seen an 185 percent jump in its uh, twelve month stock price. That is now down uh, to a hundred and uh, that's not even right. It's even, it's down even lower. It's uh, its stock price was at one eighty six. Uh, it's now down to one thirty five, uh, and it's bouncing. It's bouncing up and and down. Uh, so that tells me that we could be seeing a bottom here and and uh, a, a possible uptrend. Uh, on the way, which would make it to me something that you want to buy on the dip, if you will. So, uh, so Steve, I think it's one to watch in the next week or so. And if you if we see a confirmed uptrend of, uh, you know, maybe it's at 135. If we see it hit 137, 138 consistently, uh, then and, and it meets, uh, you know, and, and it starts moving upwards that way, then I think we've seen uh, the possibility of uh, of a nice upward momentum swing to to buy into it. So, uh, if that answers your question, is it now, is now a good time? Um, not quite yet, but close. Um, let's see. Uh, neither did brownies in the day. <laughs> Me either. I didn't either. Uh, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't my thing. Um, how about canopy at these levels? Um, canopy growth. Uh, I, again, it's, I, 
Canopy, I, I, I'm not necessarily sold on Canopy. A lot of people like Canopy because it's a big company. Uh, same with Tilray. So Buffalo, I'm probably going to address this a little bit the same. Um, but, you know, being bigger doesn't necessarily make you better. And as an investment, it doesn't make you better either. And because, you know, in all honesty, uh, you know, being a bigger company has not yielded um, huge stock gains for either Canopy or Tilray. So, you know, so does that necessarily mean that being a bigger company in the cannabis space makes you better? Not necessarily. I prefer to find companies that are doing things smart, uh, that are looking at technology. They're trying to get out ahead of the curve in terms of how to sell their cannabis, how to market their cannabis and how to produce their cannabis. Um, you know, massive operations are great, but massive operations cost a lot of money. Um, so being the biggest also means you're paying the most. Uh, and, and that's just something that you, you, you have to factor in. So, uh, will Tilray and Canopy grow, go, go somewhere? Yes. Um, they will. I, I'd like to see them both use their size to their advantage and maybe be a little bit more aggressive internationally. Um, because we, I, I really don't hear a lot about Canopy or, or Tilray doing anything internationally. I mean, they, they are international. I get that. But in terms of expanding that international footprint, I don't see it because I think we, we tend to confine ourselves into the bubble of only Canada and the United States. And that's not, that that's not where business, that's not only where business is. Um, Europe is, is, is a huge cannabis market and growing. Um, and, and I think if, if you are able to get a footprint into the European market, I think you're doing yourself a favor. Is it as big as the U S is it as big as Canada? No, but is it, um, one of those, uh, you know, is it a market to get into to definitely add to potential gains and potential, uh, you know, bottom line, top line revenue? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, uh, let's see. What about the company in Nevada that is so hush hush? I have no idea. I, I, I give me a little bit more background here, Alexandra. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know which one you're referring to. Um, you know, the, the, the biggest no company I know of in Nevada is, is planet 13. Um, uh, so I, I don't, but I don't know if that's another one that you're, that you're looking at. Uh, Steven asked about TerraSand. I do want to look at that one too. Uh, and see what I can find here. Uh, let's see. Again, because I use cap IQ, they tend to use the Canadian exchanges. So I <clears throat> have to do some changing around here. All right. TerraSend is, uh, out of Ontario. If you're not familiar uh, looks like they just had their price target raised in Canada to $20 a share from 17. So Jeffrey's appears, Jeffrey's and company appears to be fairly bullish on TerraSend, uh, cause that's a nice price hike. Um, and let's see revenue wise. Um, there's a lot of risk here, uh, as there is with any cannabis company, uh, you know, to, to find a cannabis company that has uh, low risk, uh, is, uh, I, I don't even know where you would find that because they all have risk. Uh, and, and juicy Jeff, I'm going to get to that here in a second. Uh, that's in my backyard. That's just down the road in Boca. So I'm, I'm going to talk about juicy cause I got, I got I, I gotta hammered a little bit on juicy whenever I said that I probably want to buy right now. But uh, I think what I, what people have to understand is just because I say it's not a buy right now, first off, doesn't mean it's not a buy ever. And second off, it doesn't mean that it's not a company worth looking at. It just means right now using the, the, the fundamentals that I look at and the technical analysis that I use, it's not about, it's not a company to buy right now. Um, so I'll get to Juicy here in a second, but uh, TerraSend, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to take a drink here, talking a lot. That is not a cannabis beverage, by the way, in case anyone's wondering. Um, you know, TerraSend is trading at nice multiples, um, at least in Canada, which, you know, it, can, it, it correlates pretty closely to the U.S. Um, you know, they're, they're priced to, you know, next 10 month, next 12 month EPS is, is pretty high. About 60 price to books at five, which isn't too bad. Um, you know, total revenue, uh, their the total enterprise value to total revenue the last uh, last 12 months is six, so it's a little low. Uh, total debt to uh, earnings before uh, interest, uh, uh, taxes, depreciation, and amortization is only two, so it's not bad. Um, so I, I think I think that Terrasen has a lot of potential here. In fact, it, I think it would be one I might look at. Uh, as a potential uh, watch list stock, um, it, it, it's it suffered headwinds, uh, uh, you know, the same as every other cannabis company. I don't think it's reached a bottom yet. Um, I still see it trending downward, uh, and, and I don't I don't like that. Again, there's a lot of talk about about buying the dip, 
Uh, and that's great. But again, you never know where the dip actually ends. So you could buy now, but it could drop, you know, to five dollars a share uh, or, you know, five, six dollars a share. You haven't hit the dip yet. So now you now in order for you to make a return, a positive gain or positive return on that investment. Now it's got to move even farther. That's why you look at a confirmed uptrend and, and a confirmed upward momentum, because once you buy in upwards, you know, as it continues to go upward, that's all basically gains and profit for you. Um, so, uh, Jack, if you're asking if I see Terracent as a huge opportunity, yes, I do. Um, but again, in terms of a buy-in point, I'm not there yet. Um, I might, I might try to alert this and see if I can figure out when it reaches the bottom. Uh, and starts moving back up again. Uh, is it the one good thing Canopy has done? Um, potentially, yeah. I, I, I think I think there's uh, 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 there there's a uh, you know, Canopy's done a lot of things. Um, is this one of the good ones? I think time will tell. But it's got a lot of potential. Um, uh, YJK asks, what's my current cannabis portfolio? Five, ten percent of my total portfolio. <laughs> Um, I'll tell you what, I, I, I won't get into what my portfolio looks like. Um, but I will tell you what I would recommend if you were investing. Um, I, you know, cannabis is volatile. Um, I, I would say five to 10% was, is a good, is a good place to start. Uh, if you're looking at crypto, I'd go even less than 5% just because it's even more volatile. Um, but I, you know, I think if you're, if you're wanting to diversify, I think cannabis, uh, is a way to do it. I would say probably the lower end of five to 10% right now. Uh, and then, you know, maybe build that up as we start seeing the market come back and legalization, uh, you know, become, become even better. Uh, let's see. True leave. Um, yeah, that's, I, oh, I was talking about Terrasen. Jamie, I was all over the place. Jack, I'm glad you're here that you can, you can keep me, keep me straight. Cause no one else is, uh, true leave. You know, I, I like True Leave. I really do. Um, you know, they have a big, big presence here in Florida. I mean, they uh, out of the 358 dispensaries that are here in the state, uh, I think True Leave has 200 of them. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a massive market share here in Florida. And I've already talked about how strong um, Florida Florida is. Um, I, you know, I was I was down on True Leave. Uh, a couple months ago, and I'm glad I was because it dropped off. It was it was kind of moving upwards a bit, but at the time, I think True Leave was approaching very close to its top that we saw in March. Uh, and and you know, I, I again, I got some guff, which is which is fine. I don't mind that. I, you know why? I mean, True Leave is awesome. It's it's going to be uh, it's going to be awesome. Why, why would you not buy into it? Like, well, this is why. Um, I look at the stock chart and uh, about, uh, you know, a couple of weeks after I said it wasn't a buy, it starts to drop. So, uh, you know, again, whenever I say that a company is not one I would buy, it's because I wouldn't, it's not because I think it's a bad company. If I think it's a bad company, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll let you know if I think it's bad. If I think it's got nowhere to go, it's got no direction. I'll let you know. By and large, whenever I say that, you know, a company is not uh, worth uh, not uh, not a buy right now. It's because I either have a problem with its fundamentals, but with cannabis, I tend to be a little easier with that because we are talking about companies that, that struggle to make money. And I also look at technicals and I look at its stock chart. Where's the stock chart at? I mean, I try to keep things very very simple. I don't want to overcomplicate the uh, you know the the trading process because I don't think it needs to be. Um, I very much kind of uh, hold with with Adam Adam Odell, our chief investment strategist. I you know I, I I am very honored and privileged to work side by side with with him and Charles Sizemore, and we all kind of have this very simplistic approach to how how you should be uh, how should you should be trading. Um, you know, it should not be overly complicated. Um, you know, it's it's not hard. Uh, it, you know, the more you add into it, the harder you make it. So whenever I talk about that, you know, whenever I talk about companies. Uh, that I say, okay, I wouldn't buy it right now. Uh, you know, people tend to take off and say, well, why not? Because it's not good. Uh, it, because it's it's a great company. It's got nowhere to go but up. Well, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying right now, I wouldn't buy it. So, um, as as far as True Leave, um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, again, it's trading relatively flat uh, at this point. So there may be, uh, you know, a little bit down to go. I think they closed down today. Yeah, they did. They closed down slightly today, not by much, less than a percent. <clears throat> Excuse me. But again, they do have a big presence in Florida. Um, 
and they are in California, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. They are, they are spread around pretty, pretty well. Um, Greg asks, um, when will, when will MJ be removed from the schedule that equates it with heroin? Uh, that's, that's a government question. That's Paul. That's politics, Greg. Um, you know, I would love to say it was going to be tomorrow, but it's not, uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, it's going to fight a tangled web in Congress, uh, which if you are unfamiliar with the political process, if it is something that even remotely sniffs of, of, of not having bipartisanship support, it's in for a long ride. And I think cannabis is one of them. And you would think that doesn't make a lot of sense. I talked about this from the start. You've got so many states that are either have legalized or um, are in motion or, or you know petitions or, or laws are in motion to make it legal. Why would the Senate and the House not follow suit? Well, Washington politics is a, is a heck of a lot different than Tallahassee politics or Atlanta politics or, or Sacramento politics. Um, you know, yeah, Jack, you think, you think it would help, but if that were the case, then I think we would see cannabis be moving a lot faster. Now, granted Congress has been locked up in infrastructure spending in, uh, reconciliation, uh, you know, 3.5 trillion in reconciliation. So cannabis is not high in the priority right now. Uh, and then once we get out of that, guess what? Now you're going to start seeing a focus on the 2022 midterm elections. And that means absolutely nothing will, will, will get done. Just because when, uh, you know, members of the House, you have to look at it this way. They have about, oh, six to eight months of being able to solidly politic and, and govern. And then for the rest of their two-year term, it is all trying to get reelected. Um, that's just, that, that's just how it is. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just a political game and, I, I think we're going to see more and more. And I said this at the first of the year, more and more states are going to legalize this before the, the federal government does. Um, the only thing the federal government will be able to do at this point is just now be able to allow interstate, inter, interstate, interstate reg, uh, commerce, which right now they don't. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, as more states begin the process of legalization, whether it's medical, adult use or both, you know, this, this may be just a, a, a null point with the exception of banking for cannabis companies and interstate commerce. They're already opening the doors to allow research for, uh, you know, for cannabis as well as for uh, psychedelics, which is great. Um, that can only lead to more adoption of psychedelics and cannabis as general practice. So, uh, Jack, uh, Merrill coming out favoring institutional investing. Um, I, you know, it, I, I thought it would be a little bit bigger boom for cannabis companies than it was. Um, it it kind of fell on deaf ears a little bit. Um, I, I, I'm neither here nor there with it. I, I think any 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 traders who have been involved in cannabis don't, I, you know, it's it's not an institutional investment game. Uh, it, it once it becomes legal, it will be, um, but right now it's not. Um, so I, it's great, but I, I don't think you're going to see a lot of institutional investors really jump into it full throated. I think it's going to be dip your toe in the water and you know don't spend too much, and we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, Buffalo man, it's going to be a long ride. Not, it, uh, you know, is it going to happen by the end of the year? No, it may not happen by the end of 2022. It, it hard to say. Um, but I, I think, uh, you know, more and more States are going to move a lot quicker. Uh, and I think it's because, you know, the States are, are much more in tune theoretically, uh, not every state, but the States are much more in tune to what their populace wants than Congress is. And, and I don't necessarily, and I, I'm not, I don't want to get into politics. My, my background is politics, but I don't, I don't want to get into that because that's not what we're talking about. But, um, you know, in, in, in Washington, um, it's not always in your best interest. I'll just put it that way. Uh, and, and as experience in, in, in interviewing members of Congress and sitting down with them and having, you know, one-on-ones and, and, and off the record conversations, I can tell you that, your pride, your, your, you know, the constituency isn't necessarily job one all the time as it should be. Um, seriously though, state saying, okay, but still fed, uh, defeats purpose. No, not, no, it doesn't. It, it, it actually doesn't Alexandra. And, and the reason why I say that is because, you know, as more States adopt, that still opens up those States to market for, for cannabis companies. What it doesn't do is it doesn't allow for interstate commerce uh, you know, for states to be able to sell, uh, you know, uh, an Oregon company to be able to sell cannabis in Florida. 
and, and things like that. That's, uh, you know, and also you've got, you know, the decriminalization issue, but that's kind of working itself out with the states too. So does it defeat the purpose? Not really. It doesn't necessarily make it any easier for cannabis companies just because until banking uh, is, is regulated a little bit better in favor of cannabis companies, it's still going to be very difficult for them to raise capital. Uh, and this isn't capital they're needing to pay the bills. This is capital they're needing to expand. Um, so until that happens, uh, you know, that's really the only negative impacts I see here. But when you start seeing states like Midwestern states like Nebraska, the Dakotas, you know, Wyoming, you know, these are traditionally, and again, not political, but just socially conservative states that you would not think of as being ones that would, that would invite, uh, open the door to cannabis. But yet here we are, we're seeing it happen. Um, and if, if, if Nebraska opens the door, then you're going to start seeing companies maybe like a true leave or planet 13 or somewhere like that, that are going to go in and say, okay, we're going to apply for a license and start marketing and selling. And with Apple's regulations being lifted in terms of cannabis company sales, as long as they geofence, uh, you know, the process, then it works fine for them. It just doesn't allow them to sell across state lines. That, that's really it. So is, does it defeat the purpose? No, it does not. Um, I think, in fact, I think it actually just makes the case stronger as you see more and more states adopt it. I, I, I think it just makes the case stronger for federal legalization of cannabis uh, when you see more and more states say, okay, we're going to do it. And, and it's not a red state, blue state issue. Um, I think for politicians, this is a tax issue. This is an issue where they can sell it because they can tax it and they can use the revenue for taxes to, for schools, for roads, for whatever. No different than gaming. Uh, you know, gaming, uh, you know, is, is a sin industry, if you will. And, you know, how they sell it is, okay, so, uh, you know, we'll okay casinos and then we'll just tax, you know, the heck out of it and we'll use those taxes to pay roads. Uh, okay, so if I travel from state to state, is it okay to be in possession elsewhere? Uh, depends on your state. Um, if you're going from Florida to, uh, or anywhere to Florida, then no. You can't. I mean, it, it's based on the, the destination state you're going to or the state you're in at the time. Um, so if you're in Florida and you don't have a medical license, uh, a medical card, and you have you know marijuana in your possession, then that's, a, that's an offense. So no. Um, there are, you know, some states are looking at trying to work it very similar to, and this is ironic, gun, uh, you know, gun uh, licenses, you know, concealed carry licenses where you can have a concealed carry license here in Florida. And I could go to Kansas and the, my license from Florida would still work. I don't have a license, but uh, it would work there. There are some states that are trying to work on that as kind of a usurping of federal government, uh, you know, legalization. So, so in a question, in your question, Alexander, no, you, you, it, it would depend on where you're going, where you're going to, and where you're going. Um, you know, you can't carry it on a plane. Uh, you can't carry it on a, a train crossing state lines and like that. Um, so, you know, you just, you, you have to know the laws of not only where you're at, but where you're going. Uh, and, and that's another thing that, that the federal government, you know, will, will, you know, can address in legalization, but a lot of instances where, you know, you don't, you don't have, well, I say that that's not true, but you have people that are crossing state lines in Illinois and buying, uh, buying cannabis in Illinois and then taking it back to Missouri or taking it back to, you know, uh, you know, Wisconsin or somewhere like that because it's legal to sell. Uh, and, and it's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, New York moved so fast to, you know, approve adult use cannabis because New Jersey did it and New York doesn't want to miss out on, on, on tax dollars. So, um, but yes, uh, T.6, we definitely need safe banking. MSOs can uplist. Uh, I agree. Um, is industrial hemp a pipe dream? Um, right now. Yeah, probably it's, it's a lot farther off from being realized than, uh, you know, than, than it could be. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't really get into industrial hemp too much in terms of discussing it, but just from what I've, I've read, uh, I, you know, and, and who knows, I mean, technology moves at a lightning, at a lightning pace. So, uh, you know, it could be one of those where it moves faster than it's moving right now, but I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Hexo undervalued. What's the deal? Um, is Hexo actually undervalued or is it stock prices dropping? Um, cause there is a difference, um, between the two. And let me look and see if I can find Hexo. Cause I, I like to find the multiples here and, and see when you say it's undervalued, 
what do you mean by that? Uh, let's see. Uh, 2% drop today. Is it undervalued? Um, price to sales, price to book. It's undervalued compared to the industry. Its return ons are, are terrible. Uh, you know, you're looking at return on assets of negative 31%, return on equity of negative 39%, return on intra, uh, re return on investments of negative 32%, gross margin of minus 23%. Whew. Wow. Um, Hexo's got some struggles. Um, and, and that financial picture with those ratios does not, does not look appealing to me. Uh, you know, this is, and remember this is a company that had a 52 week high of $11. It's a, it's, it, it closed at 239 and it's not stopping a downward movement. It dropped 2% today. So, uh, you know, the deal here is, is that, you know, this is a company that has faced typical cannabis headwinds. I mean, you have to understand the broader cannabis market has seen a decline of around 51% since March. So, you know, you ask why cannabis companies are dropping. There's no major headline that is causing cannabis companies to move in one direction or the other. This is just, these are just headwinds that the, that the industry faces. I know that's not a great explanation as we'd like to point to one thing and say, um, okay, uh, this is why this company did this and this is why. Um, and yes, I, I know Hexo did a reverse split four to one, um, but I'm looking at, at it. This is its price even with that four to one split because um, it's four to one split. Uh, was done before its price hike. Uh, it, it reached its top after the after the split, <clears throat> and now it is it is cratering to a price below even when it was uh, before it uh, it split. In fact, I think it's at a fifty two week low today, or it was yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday, or the day before. So yeah, I mean it's companies. Uh, it's 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 got some issues. Not not one that I would recommend at this point. Um, I'm I'm just I'm I'm not there. I don't. I don't, uh, you know, sales, uh, Q3 sales were down massively. Uh, you know, Q2 sales were 26 million. Q3 sales were 18 million. And this is a comp and, and this is in an industry that has seen across the board increases in sales in cannabis. So, you know, that that's that's a that's a red flag for me when you when I see a drop, Q2 to Q3, 26 to 18 million. That's uh, that could be a factor. So, I, you know, there's a lot of things you can look at here. But like I said, it's not one headline that is pushing cannabis up. If, if the Senate puts, uh, you know, uh, assigns the cannabis bill, uh, legalization bill, the committee tomorrow, then that would be one thing that will push cannabis stocks up because investors will get excited. They'll realize that, hey, we're moving in the right direction. Now we're going to see something. Let's start piling it. But until that happens, it's, it's business as usual. And if you, if you, um, have a poor quarterly report as a cannabis company, you're going to get hammered for it. Grow generation happened with them. Hexo, it's happening with them. So really, you 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 can look at just that. It, it, it'll be just as basic as what was their quarterly sales? What is their you know what is wh what are they projecting? Um, you know you can look at what anal analysts are projecting, but you know take it for what you will. Uh, it's a guess. Um, I can say that you know I expect Hexo. As an analyst, I expect Hexo to, I would put my price target at $5 a share. Does that necessarily mean, <laughs> mean that it's right? <laughs> no, <laughs> it doesn't. It's a guess. I'm, I'm guessing based on some sort of algorithm. So um, let's see. Uh, Hexo, like I said, I, it's low. It, it, it may present a nice buying opportunity if we see an uptrend, um, but I don't know that it's done moving down. Um, are there seasonal periods when weed companies tend to rise as a group, like uh, fourth quarter into Christmas? I think you're thinking like retail. Um, retail companies tend to have very strong uh, fourth quarter reports, thus pushing their stock up uh, in the in the first quarter um, because sales are stronger over the holiday. Do, do cannabis companies have that? Not necessarily. No, um, you know, there's not there's not a particular season that is best for cannabis because cannabis by and large is, you know, unless you're in a temperate climate is grown indoors. So it's not one of those things where product is less in winter months than it is in summer months because they're not growing because, you know, they're growing inside. So it's all very climate controlled. So I wouldn't say, um, I, I wouldn't say that there's a particular season 
there's not a seasonality to cannabis companies that 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 push it up as a group. Headlines push cannabis companies up as a group. Bad earnings push them down. And this is where your companies like Tilray or or Canopy Growth will have a much larger impact on the broader market. When Canopy is down, it tends to you know push down the entire market as a whole. Tilray is the same. If Tilray comes out and has bad earnings, the entire cannabis industry, the, can, the entire cannabis market will go down, almost a guarantee. Um, just because they're looked at as the largest, they're looked at as the leaders, and so as one goes, so uh, so do the rest. So, um, so no, there's not there's not really a seasonal uh, a seasonal period for cannabis that I can really tell. I mean, some some companies may have that. I, you know, there may be some in the Emerald Valley in California. They may be a little bit more seasonal um, because they are grown outdoor outdoors. I, I really, I, but I think by and large, no. Um, uh, Canopy said by the end of this year, they will be profitable. Let's see. I agree. I, I want to see that. Again, I, I don't, it, I don't, I want to see every cannabis company thrive, whether I recommend it as an investment or not. I want to see the market grow because I think it's got that much potential. Um, so I don't want to see a company fail. I don't, I, I want to see a cannabis company be profitable. I do for, without question. I do whether I've recommended it as a, as a stock to, to buy or not. I will trumpet that, you know, when it comes out as much as I possibly can, because that's good news for the entire industry. Because if one company can do it, the other 300 or some that are listed on the exchanges can too. That, that, that's just, that's my firm belief. And that's, that I'm not going to waver from that. Um, because, I, you know, I just, uh, let's see. I stopped my thought. Hang on. I need another drink. Again, not a cannabis beverage and not alcohol either if my boss is watching. Um, AYR wellness. Hmm. Okay. I have heard of it. Yes. Um, have I looked at it? No. AYR wellness. This one trades over the counter. AYRWF closed up a bit today. Uh, let's see. Volume is a little low. Only about 179,000 shares trading hands. Um, it did move up slightly today, which is not bad. Um, let's see. Sales look good. Um, you know, I don't, they haven't reported Q3 yet. Q1 was 58 million. Wow. Q2 was 91 million in sales. That's that's a nice jump. Multiple wise, they're right in range. Uh, gross margin is very good. Very good great gross margin. That is a phenomenal. A gross margin of 38% compared to the industry that they're in, which is agriculture, uh, of only 12%, 13%. That's not bad. The net margin is 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 bad, but it's not nearly as bad as the rest of the industry. So, uh, you know, I could be some potential here. There, there could be some potential with AYR. <clears throat> uh, I don't see any, any particular news items that would cause me to... Uh, they are acquiring a levy of cannabis-infused seltzers. Again, cannabis beverages... I'm not sure that's a catalyst for much of anything right now. I could be just not yet. Um, I'm just, I, I just, I don't, I don't believe, I don't know there. Like I said, they're just not my cup of tea. They taste terrible. I'm not a seltzer guy anyway. If I want to drink fizzy water, I'll drink fizzy water. Um, but I don't. So, um, trading wise, you know, it's, it had a high of around 36. It's trading at 24, but it's, it's still bouncing. It's, I guess we're going to see some resistance at 30. Uh, and maybe a bottom, a bottom of maybe 22. So we could see a little bit lower movement before it bounces back up and, and starts testing resistance at 30 again. Um, I think there could be some potential here. 1.3 billion market cap. Not bad. Uh, I do. And I'm, I'm, I'm with you, uh, uh, Jack, I do hear good things about their CEO. Uh, I, um, you know, it's a New York company. Um, yeah, I mean, it's got some medical, medical retail dispensaries. Uh, it's got, uh, concentrates, edibles, vapes. Uh, they do consulting and uh, operational support for licensed cannabis companies, which I think is nice. I always like to see companies helping other companies in a similar space. Uh, so that, 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 in, that immediately uh, appeals to me. Um, I'd want to dive into this a little bit more, um, to see, you know, I want to see that Q3 report and see what happens there. Um, uh, but right now, like I said, its ratios look decent. Um, its return-ons aren't very good, so its quality is probably a little low. Um, but it could be a good value. 
Uh, could be a good value play. Um, debt, kind of an issue. Uh, $253 million in debt. Cash, $124 million. Yeah, I've seen worse. So, you know, I guess, I guess there's, 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 al there's always worse out there. Um, so, yeah, I'd want to do a little more research on AYR uh, against trades over the counter, AYRWF. Uh, but again, appreciate that. Um, Allied Health. Let's look at that one. Allied Health. I, Allied Healthcare Products. I assume, Alexandra, that's what you're asking about. Allied Healthcare Products. Let me make sure. Healthcare industry, hospitals. I don't know. I don't think this is the one you're looking at. Yeah, this isn't it. This is compressors and medical equipment. I'm fairly certain that's not the one you're referring to. Uh, unless it is, maybe. Allied Health. I, the only one I could find trades on the NASDAQ, AHPI. Is that the one you're talking about, Alexander? Just hit back whenever you uh, whenever you can. But I don't... <clears throat> if you have a ticker, shoot it my way. I don't, I don't see it. Um, uh, doing a share buyback. Uh, are you talking about AYR? Hudson, Hudson's doing a share buyback. Um, I mean, a lot of companies, when you're, when you're, when you're capital rich, you want to buy back your shares. The challenge will be if uh, government decides they want to tax those buybacks, which they have talked about. So you just have to be very cautious about reading too much into share buybacks. It does mean that there is maybe a better financial position for the company. But if we start seeing taxes included in here, then, uh, that, that is a problem. So, um, Cresco Labs, um, Cresco. Yeah, I haven't heard much about Cresco either. They've been relatively quiet. Um, you know, again, I look at these. I look at these stock charts, and and they all look a lot alike. I mean, they do. I mean, you can overlay some of these, and they just look so similar. Um, Cresco, not much in the way of news. I don't think they uh, they they did acquire uh, a cultivation facility in Massachusetts. Um, they got a dispensary. They got Blair wellness and a dispensary in Maryland. Um, nothing screaming out to me about this stock right now. Um, uh, multiples are decent that, wow, that price to cash flow is terrible. That price to cash flow 439. Wow. You only have an operating cat. You only have operating cash flow at 12 million. That's a red flag. That, that's a problem. That's a lot of money being taken out of your cash flow. Good gross margin, but wow, that's that. The trailing 12 month income is negative 90 million. Financially, that's tough. That's tough even for a cannabis company. So, that, but again, they're not being pushed down nearly as much as other cannabis companies have. They're trading about in line with other cannabis companies. So, um, you know, I don't know that uh, Cresco would not be one I'd invest in right now at all. Uh, that, the the multiple of, of price to cash flow is, is huge from that 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 takes it out of being a value stock entirely. That's that's huge. That's that's ten more than ten times higher than the industry average. Uh, and, and that's just that's awful. That is absolutely terrible. Again, let me preface all this by saying I'm not saying that Cresco is a bad company. I'm saying that on paper, looking at its technicals, looking at its fundamentals, it is not a company to invest in, in my opinion. If you want to invest in it, invest in it. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to hold your money for you. But I, that is that is unbelievable. They do have a little bit better return ons, which makes it a little bit better in terms of, of quality, but not great. So, you know, I don't know. 439 as your price to cash flow ratio. Whew, that is terrible. Bootstrap, uh, you know, I talked about Hexo at, at nauseum just about, <laughs> about five or 10 minutes ago. I mean, I, mean, I, I have to round up what I what I said about Hexo. Um, you know, I've talked, I, I've spoken ill of Hexo before, um, and it's and and I, I my my, uh, my my view on Hexo has not changed. Quarterly sales are are down in a time where where monthly sales across just about every state where it's legal are up. So my question is, is what is Hexo missing? What are they not? What are they, no? You're good, bootstrap. I'm just giving you our time, man. Don't don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. I don't mind. I don't mind getting back to it. It's no no big deal. But yeah, I, I look at it. Q1 sales 26. Q2 sales rather 26 million. Q3 sales 18 million. That's a problem. Uh, that's a big problem. Uh, you know, ratio wise, you know, the price to ratios are okay uh, against the agriculture market, um, but their return ons are terrible. Gross margin minus 24. percent 
That's your gross margin. Your net margin minus 185%. No, not, not, not right now. Not now for Hexo. My view, my view on Hexo stays the same. And, and I, I said it uh, several months ago that Hexo was one to stay away from. And right now that has not changed. Those, that, that, those fundamentals are, are terrible, terrible. They may change. I hope they do. Again, I hope they do. I hope any cannabis company that is struggling right now that's publicly traded turns things around. I want the entire sector to be profitable. I, I do. I want this to be alcohol. Maybe not a great comparison, but I, you know, I want this to be very similar to that. I don't want Congress to set it up like alcohol, but I, I want it to be like that. We saw alcohol prohibition. The illicit market turned up. Then once the, you know, once it was repealed, you know, beverage companies making alcohol made tons of money. They still do. They still make tons of money. Who's, you know, people aren't stopping to not buy beer. Cannabis is going to be the same way. Do I think is Hexo near the bottom? Uh, I, for their sake, I hope. I mean, they were to high 1165, I think was their high. Now I take that back. Their high was 1028. They're at 239. I, that that is huge. That is a massive drop off. That is probably one of the steepest drops of any cannabis company I've seen since the month of February. You know, the broader industry is down fifty one percent. That's way more than fifty one percent. So, uh, TGIFF. Let's see. TGIFF. Nineteen. I, mean, I talked about nineteen thirty three in a video before. Um. Its volume's high. Its volume is not bad for the price it is. It's about seven cents a share. Sales are all over the place. Multiples are okay. Potential. You know, they're they're you know, debt is fourteen million. They've got fifteen. They got five million in cash. Operating cash flow though of minus four million and trailing twelve month income of minus six million. Not uncommon. Not not uncommon at all, um, and 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 let me let me let me also jump in. You know, Brett, a company can have great products, but I'm telling you that as an investor, especially in the cannabis space, that shouldn't be the sole factor you use to invest in in a company. Okay, just because you know you've got to look at a little bit larger you know, a little bit larger picture here. 1933 may have great products, but not everyone may think that way. So when you're looking to invest in cannabis companies, it's great to be passionate about it. And if you believe in 1933, invest. Invest whatever. It's a seventh as a share. Do what you got to do. Invest in it. But make sure that you're doing, a, you know, homework in terms of looking at these indicators. Look at their technicals. Look at their look at their fundamentals. What do their books look like? They may they may produce a great product to you, but they may not be selling it. So, you know, having a great product is fine. If you can't sell it, it doesn't matter. Just, so just bear that in mind. Bear that in mind. And I, and I don't I don't I don't evaluate cannabis companies based on what I think about their products because I don't test them. So <laughs> you are daily. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Then again, if you're if you're sold on 1933, then go for it. I'm I'm not going to dissuade you from doing it. Myself, I'm not there yet. I mentioned that in the video that I did a couple weeks ago that I'm not there with 1933 yet. Um, again, not saying that I won't be. Uh, yes, they do like to sell out of Planet 13. You're right. They are they are you know one of the partners for Planet 13. Um, Planet 13 has done a good job kind of bringing in. Uh, various, various, uh, you know, partners to sell, especially at their new California superstore. Um, and Planet 13, you know, it's struggling. Uh, I'll be honest. I'll, I, I, I won't shy away from it. You know, it's, it's, it's in our cannabis watch list. Um, you know, it's down 17 and a half percent. And I understand that. And I'm not, I'm not at a point to where I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to sell it or tell you to, to get out of it. But it, I mean, cause again, I look at high tide. High tide was down as much as 25% about a month ago. That's only down 9%. So it just goes to show you that there's a lot of fluctuation in the market. Um, any thoughts on hydrogen right now? 
Oh, are you talking? About, oh, I we are less. Okay, you're you're asking me a, a, a broader question here. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's like we are less boys. I'm sorry. I I was like oh, hydrogen in cannabis. And then I had to think about it. I was like, okay, um, you're you're probably asking me about. I'm sure hydrogen as you know an alternative fuel, maybe perhaps. I, I'm I'm guessing that's what you're going with. Um, you know, I'll tell you what. I, you know, the three of us, Adam, Charles, myself all very bullish on clean energy, uh, on, on clean tech, um, where hydrogen plays a role in it. Not really sure yet. Um, not, not, I, I, I don't know. Plug power had a huge run up. I mean, plug, plug did went gangbusters, but you know, I, I think when you're, when you're looking at infrastructure here in the U S <clears throat> and, and in terms of smart infrastructure, I think you're going to see more companies lean into solar and wind than they do hydrogen just because hydrogen is not necessarily the easiest to convert to energy. Whereas wind and solar ha has proven technology to do so. I'm not saying it won't. It's just, it's just much harder to do. And I think it's a little bit more expensive to convert hydrogen to power um, than it is to do, to use solar and to, to do wind. Um, aesthetically, you know, solar and wind aren't the greatest unless you don't want a wind turbine or, you know, a solar farm in your backyard. Um, but I think a lot of people, you're going to see a lot of people lean more towards that than want to try to convert hydrogen somehow. Uh, and I don't think, I don't think you can convert hydrogen on a low, on a, on a small scale. I think you have to convert hydrogen on, on a, on a, on a much larger scale, like hydroelectric dams and things like that. I don't think you can do that on a smaller scale. Um, but I, you know, I'm not sure, but I, I, I hope that, I hope that answers your question, uh, on that Delta nine. Robert, I get this question a lot about Delta Nine, and I, I don't know. I'm one of those where I, I'm not afraid to tell you I don't know about something. Um, you know, there there's only a small difference, if I understand right, between uh, Delta Eight and Delta Nine cannabis, um, and it has to do with the carbon atom, I think. Um, so I don't, I don't I, pass that though. I don't really know what the big difference is between Delta nine and Delta eight. Um, it, it, I mean, it's, you know, for those who aren't aware, Delta nine is the short, it's kind of the abbreviated, you know, term for the, the cannabinoid molecule of marijuana. Um, and there's, there's different deltas that have been produced over the years. <clears throat> and, and, uh, you know, there are, uh, some suggest there's potency differences. I, I'm not really sure about that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not really one. I can't really speak on Delta nine right now because I think it's still fairly, um, fairly new in terms of, of, of its development. So, uh, let's see, uh, uh thoughts about, uh, EV go EV go. Um, I, uh, Charbucks, you'll have to kind of give me a little bit more about what you're asking about here. EV go. I mean, I, I, I understand what that means. I just didn't know if you're asking about, uh, the sector, uh, electric vehicles or, or what, I'm not really sure if I could buy one stock today, which would it be? Uh, you know, I don't, I'm going to cop out here, Robert. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, if I could buy one stock today, what would it be? Well, if, if, if I were smart, I would have bought GameStop earlier today and then sold at the end of the day. <laughs> but I, I, I don't, I don't really follow mean stocks all that much. So, uh, I mean, I follow the news on them, but I don't invest in them because they're technically they're, uh, they're horrible, you know, and, and typically fundamentally they're just as bad, but yeah, I mean, if I had to buy a stock today, I would have bought GameStop and, and sold you know, at about two o'clock this afternoon. But I, I didn't. So um, over under on a market crash. Are you asking me how much the market's going to crash or the over under on how many months or weeks is it going to be in the next six months? Uh, market crash in the next six months. Uh, wow. What do I think the over under percentage wise? Um, okay, Charbucks, I get what you're saying now. Let me get to that here in just a second. Uh, when I get on with, with good AMs quite, oh, you know, I, the over under <laughs> over under in the next six months, the market going down, I think probably 
if you're looking at it, because I don't know necessarily the market's going to go down in the next six months. Um, so I would say right now an over under would be th three and a half. Um, th that would be, I, I, you know, if it goes down probably three and a half percent. Um, and, I, and I'm sp speaking strictly of the S and P 500, not necessarily of the NASDAQ and, and, and or the Dow. Um, I, I think Europe, well, I think Asia has a much better likelihood of stocks, you know, crashing and going back into bear territory by the end of the year than, than U S stocks do not saying they won't because that's, perfectly conceivable that, uh, you know, we could see pressure because of, uh, tapering from the fed, uh, you know, inflation could continue to rise despite the tapering, you know, we can see a lot of things happen between now and six months that push, that push things in, that push things down. So, um, Oh, the stock Delta nine. See Robert, this is why I, I it's later in the day, man. Sometimes I just, I, I, I just get confused. I, I don't, I don't, I, I thought you meant Delta nine is in the strain. <laughs> my my, uh, uh, my apologies. Delta Nine Cannabis trades over the counter. DLTNF. Let's look. DLTNF. DLTNF. Delta Nine. Hmm. For a stock that is as uh, that is valued at where it is and valued by thirty three cents a share. That's an awful lot of movement. That's a lot of movement. I mean, we started at 45 a year ago. We bounced between 40 and 45. Looks like some resistance at 46, 47. Jumped to 53. <clears throat> now down to 33. Oh, wow, I don't know. Price to ratios are good. Return ons aren't bad. Debt to cash is a concern. Twenty nine million in debt, four million in cash. Then again, it's cannabis, so you know it's all right. Gross margin, not great, not great at all. Actually, sixteen percent down. Industry average is twelve. Twelve to the good. Yeah, I don't know. I. What do I think about it? I don't know enough about it, honestly. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's got a subsidiary, Delta Nine Biotech. Uh, they basically are a medical recreational cannabis company in Canada. One of hundreds. I don't know what makes this one special. That would be my question. And, and maybe Robert, you don't, maybe I don't, maybe there's not an answer for that, but what makes, what makes this, this cannabis company special? What do they do that other cannabis companies in Canada that are better off financially do better? I, and I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, unless I spent a little bit more time looking into it. Uh, they bought two stores in Edmonton, Alberta. They have 13. So now they have 15 retail stores in Canada. It's not a huge footprint. Um, you know, you have to understand Canadian expansion is fine, but Canada, 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 Canada is still a very small market. So I don't get nearly as jazzed about you know, a, a, you know, expansion in the can Canadian market as I would expansion in the U.S. market or in the European market because Canada's small. There's a lot of there's a lot of territory, but opening a, a a dispensary in the remote reaches of Alberta or I, that Edmonton is not, but you know, in in you know the outer rings of Letterkenny, Canada, and kudos to you if you get that reference, isn't that impressive to me? It, it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me. Now, if you expand into a state, if you try to get a license in Florida, that's a little bit more, that's a little bit more newsworthy to me. So as far as the stock Delta nine cannabis, I'm kind of meh right now. Um, not really sure. Cure leaf. Um, I thought I talked, did I talk about cure leaf? I thought I did. I think I did talk about cure leaf holdings a little bit. C U R L F. Uh, you know, I, I, Richard, I like that Cure Leaf is trading a little flatter than its than its peers through this difficult pullback. Um, you know, they had a top of eighteen flat, and they're at twelve now. Um, so, you know, it's a uh, you know what are we doing? A, a drop of only thirty three percent. So they're not dropping nearly as fast as uh, or as hard as the broader cannabis market. Um, so, you know, I think they're they're. Why that is, I don't really know. Cureleaf is a, it's a larger company, so it, it is able to weather some of the storm. 
Uh, the price to cash flow ratio though is just unbelievable. That's that's another one. That, I mean, not as bad as the last company I talked about. This price to cash flow, but it's 172. Industry average is 32. That hurts. Total debt, 650 million dollars in debt. I mean, it's a big company. It's a lot of debt. A lot of debt. Only 334 million in cash. Got to do better. Got to try to figure out a way to cut costs somehow. And cannabis companies struggle with that across the board. So, Cureleaf, um, <clears throat> one on the radar, I think. It's definitely one to look at. Not, not right now. Not an investment right now. Still not sure if it's going to um, test a bottom at around 11, which would, which would be a dollar less than where it's at today. It, it may turn south a little bit more. Um, so, uh, definitely one to watch, though. Uh, Brett asked, and my voice is starting to go here. So I'm going to maybe take a few more questions and then, uh, I'm going to cut it off here just a little bit. Again, guys, I haven't done this yet, but for all of you who've been on and have listened to me drone for the last hour, and 15 minutes, thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate it. I try to answer every question I can. I can't get to them all, but I try to get to as many as possible. Um, if, if maybe I didn't cover it and you, you still want to ask, the email address you can reach me at is feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. That's money and markets, no ampersand. It's actually and spelled out moneyandmarkets.com. Feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. Uh, and and uh, you know, ask, ask away. I, I love to 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 take your take your questions anytime. But let me get to let's see, FLGC. Uh, floor growth. You know, I heard some about floor growth this week. What was it? I don't remember what it was. Brett says he's been getting his butt kicked trading that one. I assume you're getting in your butt kicked trading to the bad. I sincerely hope, God, did you, I hope you didn't buy into the top at 17, at 1720, because this is 878 today. So I can definitely see how you've been getting your, your, your rear handed to you a little bit there, Brett. That that's, that's tough. Have you reached a bottom? I, I, you know, maybe I see a resistance point possibly at $7. We're up to 878, so maybe we could bounce off of that. Um, you know, it's 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 possible. Oh, you buy and sell daily? No wonder you're well, no wonder you're getting your butt kicked. <laughs> that explains it, Brett. You're buying and selling daily the same stock. Ooh. I you know, I day trading is great, but I you know, you've got to really focus on, I mean, you gotta be looking at your screens every every minute to do it. Flora growth would not be a day trading stock for me at all. Um, you know, not, not even a little, um, <laughs> I, I don't know, man. It, it's, it's bottom is $3. That's its floor. But you, you jumped up to almost eight. Now you're down to eight. Ugh. I don't know, man, Brad, I'd stay away from it right now. I, I would, I, I would, I would get out. I wouldn't, I don't have enough information on the company to tell you anything else. I don't, I really can't look at it fundamentally because it's a very small company. It's only $368 million in market cap. So, um, but look at the stock chart. I, I don't know. There's a bottom yet. Uh, not, not there. So time will tell. All right. Um, okay. Well, good. I, you know, Brett, if you, uh, day trading is not for me, but, doesn't mean it's not for anyone. For anyone, day, tra day traders can make a lot of money. They can do very, very well if they are paying attention. Um, but in terms of getting to your question about FLGC, uh, I'm inclined to say you haven't seen a bottom yet. If that helps you, um, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if it does or not, but I don't know there's a bottom yet. I mean, you saw a slight uptick today, but I, I don't know. I don't know that a, uh, that a floor has been reached. All right, I got one more here. Uh, Kronos and Kronos Group. Oh, uh, we are lay boys. I'm, I'm gonna take the French part of it there. What about the company? Were you asking about the company of Flora? Uh, again, I, you know, I don't, it's cannabis products, they probably supply cannabis products to pharmacies, medical clinics, cosmetics companies. They do a hydrating mask, a gel cleanser, eye cream. So basically, they they infuse cannabis in various healthcare products. Um, but I, like I said, I don't have an, I don't see enough information here to tell me. In fact, I look at its ratios, and there aren't um, there aren't any margin. There's no net margin. 
I, I don't have anything. So I, I don't, I, I, I can't tell you much more about the company. Uh, started in, in 2019 in Toronto. Um, so it is a very young company. Uh, it seems to be really diverse into a lot of different verticals here. Um, skincare and beauty, cannabis oil extracts, medical grade cannabis oil, clothing. They're kind of all over the place here. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. All right. So back to Kronos group trades on the NASDAQ under CRON. And this will be the, this is probably the last one I take as I, my, my voice starts to go and I, I may have to talk tomorrow and I I'll be doing it in sign language. Mm. They've been working with Ginkgo. Okay. Sales are up. It's good. Went from 13 million in Q1 to 16 million in Q2. I like their year over year and their annual sales growth, 24 to 47 million from 20 to 19. That should only get better, by the way, um, with the way the cannabis market is going. If you are a significant player in cannabis and Kronos is, then there is very little reason why your sales should not continue to trend upwards. Um, five milligram CB, uh, CBG gummies. You mean CBD or CBG? Okay, they're in Germany, Israel, and Australia. Again, potential. Its multiples are high, though. It's probably it's trading at a price of sales of forty three. The industry's at seven. Price of sales next twelve months is twenty five. The industry's at three. Price to books not bad. Its return ons are getting positive, which is nice. That net margin is concerning. A net margin of minus two hundred fifty six and a half percent. Yeah. I, you know, I, cannabis companies are spending a lot of money developing, a lot of a lot of money growing, a lot of money trying to trying to make new products and and find new inroads. So, when you're looking at the fundamentals, you know I, I want to look at value. Return ons are great, but return ons are going to be low for most cannabis companies. And right now, the multiples here tell me that we may see a bit of an overvaluation for Chronos, even at six fifty, <clears throat> just because it's. Its sales have not caught up to its its stock price, even with where it is now, and it's still on a downward trend. Again, not saying it's bad, not saying that it's not a good company, not saying that it won't come to a point eventually where it's worth an investment. Right now, I still think it's on the way. It's 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 still trending downward. Does it hit a bottom? Well, of course, the bottom is obviously going to be zero, but I, I think it'll reach a bottom soon, and then hopefully we start seeing an uptick in terms of its momentum. And if that's the case, then I think that puts Kronos in a much better position in terms of a potential buy. Again, our philosophy here, and it's one I believe in, is to buy high, sell higher. Not buy a dip, because you don't know where the dip is, but it's to buy when you see a stock that isn't a confirmed uptrend. Because when you buy a dip, you're buying a stock that is down. If you buy a stock at this point right here, and it continues to go down, in order for you to make your money back and to see any positive return, it's got to go that much higher just to get to that point. Whereas if you buy a stock that's already in an upward trend, say right here, and it continues to move forward, movement from here to here is all gain. So that's why we look at buying high and selling higher, not buying a dip. I'm not saying buying a dip is bad. It's just you got to know where the dip is. If you don't know where the dip is, you're, you, you could wind up getting some trouble. So... Guys, that, that's about all for me. I'm going to wrap it up here. It's been a great time. We had a, a lot of great interaction. I appreciate everyone who jumped on. Uh, make sure you, you, you keep it locked on our YouTube channel. We've got, obviously, the Marijuana Market Update each and every week, Investing with Charles, uh, Ask Adam Anything, the Bull and the Bear podcast. Plus, check out our, if you're not a member of our exclusive community, uh, please do so. Click join on our YouTube page. You can find out uh, all the different things that we offer and, and, and all that. Uh, and would love to, if you're not a member, would love to have you as part of our, our community. We, right now it's geared a lot towards cannabis. Um, but we are the team, uh, we are looking at a lot of, uh, uh, different avenues to maybe branch out from cannabis. So we've talked about crypto, uh, we've talked about REITs, we've talked about smart tech, we've talked about a lot of things. So, uh, if you do have an idea, maybe there's something you'd like to see, let me know. Feedback money at moneymarkets.com is the way to go. And if you have a question, comment, anything like that. That is the best way to reach myself, Adam, Charles, 
Uh, you email us feedback at moneymarkets.com. If we do use one of your questions, or as I would encourage you to uh, video you asking a question that may put you to the top of the list. I'm kidding, but it might. Um, then we're going to send you some money market swag. I got some hats. Uh, I forgot them. Hang on. My boss will kill me if I don't show them. Hang on. Got some hats. Like these. These are some of the money markets hats. I think we have some hoodies in the works which don't do a lot of favors for us here in Florida, but you know, not everyone lives in Florida. So, uh, you know, we got, we, we got some more swag coming up. So, uh, make sure, uh, make sure you check that out as well. So you do that by asking a question and we use it. Uh, if you use a video, if you video asking a question, that's even better. So feedback at moneymarkets.com, uh, more semiconductor stock videos. Uh, okay. Well, I, well, I will, I will add that. Um, EV. I, T.6, I'm going to get to EV ne next time. Um, we're going to do more of these live chats. This is not the last one. These are very, we love doing them. I love doing them. So we're going to do more of these. So don't worry. We, we, will, we, will, we will get to EVs uh, very soon. So, and, and EVs in terms of stocks, possible. Maybe. But yeah, just let us know. Feedback at moneymarkets.com. Check out moneymarkets.com every day. Uh, we've got information. We got, we have, uh, you know, smart, safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information on the website every day. We write every day to make sure we are giving you the best information for your portfolio. It's, it's not filtered, no BS, none of that. It's just straightforward. Here's what you need to know. And then you take it for what you will. So, uh, everyone, thank you so much. Uh, make sure you stay locked in, tune into YouTube more. Uh, we're gonna do more of these live chats, check out our, uh, our, our join feature and we will see everyone next time. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.